Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. So we want to talk about steel joints today by using the module RF joints. My name is Galen Schubert and my colleague Sebastian Havranke will help me throughout the webinar and he will answer all your questions. That's the statical structure we are looking on today. So, but the structure itself is not really of interest. We are looking really into detail today to so redesign connections. So at the end of the webinar, you will be able to design things like this. For those who are new today, the first time visiting a webinar, so this is the control panel from GoToWebinar and you can show and hide the control panel by using the orange button up here and you can use the chat option down here to ask questions, so this might be important. And please keep the questions short. Sebastian will try to answer them all throughout the webinar and just in case there are too many questions coming in, you will definitely get an answer, but it might be tomorrow via email. So the content today, so I will present the features of the add-on modules first. So the RF joints module is split into two main parts, which is steel and timber. The timber RF joints was presented in a webinar a few weeks ago. You can watch this webinar you can watch the recorded webinar if you want so you just have to go to the website and download it or watch it directly we talk about the steel rf joints today and this rf joint steel is again split into four different parts which is the dstv um, which handles standardized joints then we have the steel pint module and the steel column base and a, a fourth one is the tower but we don't talk about this today, so we go into detail to these three modules. So I explain the features first and then we go into RFEM and I will show you examples and we will design standardized joints together. We will design different types of pin joints and we will also design pin and restrained column bases. So, the RF joints DSTV. DSTV this is the German Steel Association. So it sounds like this is something typical German, first of all, but it isn't. These are um, joints in accordance to the Eurocode 3. And this is kind of ready, something ready made. So these are typical joints that are approved in practice. And it means basically less work for you in the designing process. So there are different types mentioned in the document provided by the DSTV. And I just show you the pictures and how it looks like in our software. So the IH is a moment resistant joint with end plates. This is something as you see here. So you have either short or extended end plates. And this is how it looks like in RFEM or Airstab. So all I talk about today is, is um, available in RFEM, but also in Airstab. So the module RF joints is identical in both program families. So the IH, so the next one is the PM, the moment resistant Perlin splices. So this is something like this. So this is how it looks like in the document, and this is how it looks like in our software. Then we have the IS, simple joints with header plates. So this, and this is, uh, this is how it looks like in RFM. So the first two are moment resistance, and now we talk about the pinned joints. And the IW and the IG are simple joints with angle cleats, but the IG, the only difference is that there is a large gap in between, and I think you see it best in this picture up here, so you see this large gap, so they are both identical beside the gap. And, sorry, the last one are the notches, and notches can be combined with all of those types I mentioned earlier, so you need them obviously quite often. Always when you have some collision, you have to build up a notch. So that's the DSTV. We go through the example and you will see how easy it is actually to, to design joints by using this module. The next, the next add-on module is out of joint steel pins. So here you are much more flexible. You design your own joints and they're all in accordance to the Eurocode 3. But on the other side, 
you have to enter far more details. So you have to enter the edge distances, the bolt sizes, the cleat profiles, and so on. So this is far more work at the end, but you are more flexible. At the moment, we have only the beam column connections ready. We work very hard on other types, and more types will follow pretty soon. And at the moment, we have four types of those beam, beam column connections ready. So these are the web cleat connections, the fin and fin and short end plate connections with and without a cleat. You can build up shear joints and or tension joints. Bolt sizes from M12 to M36 with strength grades from 4.6 up to 10.9. So you can choose arbitrary hold, bolt hole spacing and edge distance as I said already and you can obviously you can notch your beam. So the last module we talk about today is the out of joint steel column base and here you can configure your own footings and either you can design pinned footings or restrained steel columns and this is again all in accordance to Yuriko 3 and I show you all these types within the module that's just a bit easier so we have four types of hinged column bases and we have five, five types of restrained column bases ready for you. So the base plate is always welded to the steel column and you can have anchor sizes from M12 to M42. So that's it for now with the presentation. We switch already to the RFEM. So that's the system we are looking on today. And this is just a simple framework and as it might be used, it might be used as a platform in a large industry hall. And the structure and also the loads are already defined. So for example, I have the load case, I have self-weight, I have imposed loads and so on. So for example, the, the imposed loads do look like this. And finally, this is all combined in a result combination. And this is the only we are interested in today. So this is the one we use for the design process. So the result combination one, and I can show you the results of this. I've made a few ready so that it looks a bit nicer. So, so this is the result combination we use for all designs. So now we are ready to open out of joints and start with the design of the first connection. So I switch the numbers on, the node numbers, because that's quite important. So we, we are looking into detail today. And for example, we have a look to the node number 70, which is a quite difficult one. So that's the one you have seen in the PowerPoint presentation first. So I open out of joints. There are several ways how you can open this. I've put it, I've put it into my favorites. So it's up here. Usually you find it somewhere down here in the list, or you can open it by going to add on modules, connections, and then out of joints. So this is how the first page always looks like. So we have just quickly again, it's separated into steel and timber. We look to steel today. Then there are four parts ready, the column base, the pin joints, tower and typified joints, so the DSTV. And then again, you have different types of, of connections. So we get started with the DSTV. So, and we start with a simple joint. So, instead of, you have all these letters I explained to you earlier, but you don't really have to use them if you, if you are not used to them. You can also go along with the pictures we provided down here. So, I rename, you have always, you can always define several cases. So, I rename my case into DSTV simple joint. That it makes just life a bit easier later on and you remember better what you did. So this is the first case, simple joint. And I have already selected, no, I didn't, I want to make a simple joint with an angle cleat. It's the IW I want to do. So that's the second figure we are looking at. So this checkbox here, export hinge and eccentricity automatically. I don't want to talk about this. This is a nice feature where you can export those settings to the main program, but this is more relevant for moment resistant joints. So I do not go into detail in 
this today. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask us via email. So, so that's all we have to do basically with the general page and we already go to the next one which is nodes and members. We look at the node number 23. So I can select the node graphically. The node number 23 is over here. So I select it. You see it's selected now. I click OK and now it's in the list. You can also type the node number itself if you already know it. And now I can zoom into this graphic so that we know what we are doing. So now we have to help the add-on module to get all the members sorted down here. So it, it kind of tries to help us, but it's just a bit too difficult. Then there is one beam which, which is too difficult to get um, assigned. So we have the M25. When you click in these lines, you see that it's emphasized in the graphic here. So it's with the red lines and this is a supporting element. It's not a beam. The M27, that's the one here. We are not interested in this. We want to connect this beam, the M28, to the M25 and the M30. So I set this to inactive and it just disappears from the list. So the M28 is a beam. This is the beam we want to connect. And the M30 is again a supporting element. And it asks me always this question. It kind of keeps learning. And is, so you can always say, yes, please keep this in mind. And the next time it might work a bit better. So this is all we have to do here. We go onto the loads page. And as I said, we always use the result combination one. So you can use this arrow, add selected load case, select it for design. So this is all we have to do here. And now we go on to the connection type page. This is already the last one for the DSTV module. And here are a few suggestions. And here is a button, which is a quite nice one. It's called suggest the best type. And when I click this, it's doing a pre-design here. So you get the utilization here and it suggests indeed the best type and for this special connection we want to use this one. You have the graphic down here. You can just try this when you choose another one. The graphic is updating. It just takes a wee while or I don't see a difference here. I go to this one. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a difference. We are going to use this one today. This was suggested. I just double check. Yes. So now what we have to do, we can rotate and move the graphic and zoom in the same way as you do with the main graphic from RFPM or RSTAB. So I can rotate this or I can use these buttons down here. I can switch to the minus Y view and can zoom in and you see already what's the problem. We need a notch up here. We need to notch the upper flange. So and here it is already notching of beam and I it's not applied at the moment and I want to have a notch for the upper flange. So I said this and now again you have these type numbers here. This is because it's the DSTV module but if you don't know anything about this you just go into the length and the height and, and change the dimensions manually and these numbers up here they are updating automatically so it doesn't really matter how they are called basically. And so. As you see, the 40 is not its not enough, so our, our beam is longer, so we ch change the length to 60, and now it looks pretty good. And as I said, here the number changed, so obviously the 6 matches the length and the 2 matches the height and so on. We could adjust here the, the member alignment, but I did this already in my main model. So I just overtake it. At the, I just overtake the eccentricity from the model. You could change this. So that's all we have to do for this connection. And I already calculate this one. And we get a design summary here. And this is pretty good. It all says okay. And here you get the ratio. And we have it's the 
design ratio is 28%, so more than good. And that's us done with the first connection. So we go ahead with the second one. So this was a pinned joint made with the DSTV module. So as you have seen, there was not many things to do for us because we used a ready-made connection. So the second one, I create a new case so that I keep all the different cases I design. So a new case, which I call DSTV again, and I call it moment resistant because that's now what we are looking at. So it jumps to the general page. We have seen this already. It's the same again. And this time we go to the moment resistant joints and we choose, this is a bit, we have to change this. So this is all saying IH because the type is, is the same. So it's better for us now to look at the figures and we want to design a beam column beam connection. So that's the figure here on the right hand side. So I choose this one. That's all. We go to the next page and I choose the node number 17. So that's a quite important node for us today because it's a difficult connection. So I zoom in. This is the connection we are looking on. This number 17, it's selected. I click OK and it should load the members. And we zoom into this graphic also. It did pretty good because we pre-selected a beam column beam connection. So it's kind of tries to get it sorted. Um, but still, we have to double check. So the M15 is a beam. That's correct. The M19, it already kind of says, oh, it's not defined. And this is correct. So we don't use this as an inactive one. So this is now disappearing. But we come back. This is the member number 19. We come back to this one. When we finish up with this connection using the uh, module RF joint steel pins. So just to be by later in the webinar. The M and member 46 is a beam again. That's correct. And those two, the 90 and the 132, these are supporting elements, which is the column in this case. So that's all correct. That's all done. And we go on to the loads. And here, Again, I use the result combination one, and you can also double click on the result combination and it jumps onto the right hand side. So, connection types. And again, I use this nice button here, suggest the best type. And here now, that's a bit more. We have the first two, they are not working, so the utilization is, is larger than one, so I can't use these two. It suggests now this type. And there is a ratio of 39%, which is quite close to one. So I would prefer to use the other one, which is just utilized up to 73%. So, but we can have a look to the difference. So you see it in the picture. This is a quite thick end plate, but it's short. And here are no stiffeners in the column. And if I change to the one I would rather like to use, it takes a while. The short plate, uh, the end plate gets thinner, but it's longer. So we have two more screws up here and we have the stiffeners in the column. So I would like to use this. And that's basically all we have to do here. Because we don't need a notch, we can have a look. Looks pretty good. Here's no notch required. And everything else is preset by the module because it's a standardized connection. So I can calculate and now double check the design summary. So this is all okay. We have the 73%. This is the resistance of the moment Y and all the other things. So this is all okay and we are ready. So I want to point out the graphic to you. You can, this is a detailed graphic of, of what we just did. And here you have several choices. I just play around with this a bit. You can switch on dimensions of end plate, for example, or you can, yeah, you can switch off and on the beam. So you can kind of 
make it ready for you to be printed in the printout report. I show you this later on, how to print the graphic in the report. And here are some presets uh, things. You could display the whole structure, which is the one it starts with, or you can only show the end plate, for example. So this is something you could print in the protocol. But we do this later. I just want to emphasize this one. So that's us done with the first two connections. And also we are finished now with the DSTV module. And as you have seen, this was all pretty easy. And we could do more and more connection types of this, but it would be all quite similar. And so you can test them yourself if you like. And you note it, it's all quite easy to enter and that you sometimes not even have to change anything as, you, as here in the second one we did. So the first connection just, just needed a notch and the second one did not require any modification. Although actually this is a quite complicated one, so a beam column beam connection. So, and you will see now, we, we go on to the steel pin add-on module and you will see that it's much more effort we have to do here for, this, for the designing process. So, on we go with the next one. So, I create a new case and this one is now a pinned one. So, because I use the module steel pin, so I call it pin and this will be a web cleat connection. So I call it web cleat for me to remember and I click OK and it jumps into the channel data page. Here now I have to choose the correct module, it's pinned joints. And I want to do this beam to column, that's what I said earlier. So beam to column is the only one ready at the moment. We work on more different types of connections here. But beam to column can be used and we want to do a web cleat connection. So these are the four, I, I sh did show you them in the presentation, these are the four available to you. So web cleat connection for now. Here I want to talk about this quickly. So you can load the joint by axial forces. So this is what I mentioned in the presentation, you design shear connections, you design the connections for shear, but you can switch on or off the tension forces and that's the point where you do this. And the second one, I keep this on and it will do ductility checks and we will, I talk about this later again and I go into detail here, but we go through the, the geometry first of all and we will see that the design is not working from the beginning on and that we have to correct something and I will explain what's going on with this one. So we keep it on just for you to note. So we choose a node in the member and as I promised we will come back to this node 17. We want to finish this up. So I choose again the node 17 and now we want to attach this beam to the column. So okay, it loads all the beams in and now it's of obviously it's a bit difficult for the module to find everything so we have to adjust quite a bit here. So the M15 is the one we don't need because we did this already. Sorry. In, ah. Now I did something wrong. So, okay, I just started again because I did something wrong. So I selected the node 17 again and it loads all the members in again. So the member 15 is inactive because it disappears from the list, from the table. So you have to be a bit careful. So it's the M19, which is a beam. I zoom in so that you all see this a bit better. The M19 is the beam we want to attach now. And then we have the M46, which is inactive. And the 90 and the 132, these are is the column. So this is correct. And this is all done now. So this is the selection we made. So the loads, again, this is all the same. So I don't explain this. Double click on result combination, that's it. And now we go on to the geometry. Now it's called geometry, not connection type anymore, because we have to define the geometry. So I rotate this a wee bit so that we see what we are doing. 
Okay. Here you see it's it's a long list, and we will go through now and change numbers. So the notches coming up here at the beginning, we do not apply this right now because just from this connection, we don't need a notch. But we will see later on there will be a collision and we have to apply a notch later on. But for now, we keep it as it is. So we have to adjust the, the cleat itself. So I choose a different angle. This opens just the library, so I pressed on the button with the three dots and it opens the library and I want to choose a real angle and I want to do this in accordance to the Eurocode and this is an unequal angle I want to choose and it's the one with dimensions 100 by 75 by 8 so it's down here, this is the one I want to use. Okay. And I have chosen an unequal one because what I want to show you here is when you watch the graphic carefully, you could change now the longer leg having on the beam or having it on the column. So you could change this and it would just rotate, swap the angle around. So, But I obviously it doesn't fit this way, so I use longer leg on beam as it is preset. So we have to adjust the cleat length, which is here. To 120, so I want to decrease this a bit, so that we have a bit more space here. All the other dimensions are set by the cross-section I have chosen. You could have it centered on the beam, or you can change this here on the highest position. It wouldn't change a lot here, so we keep it centered on the beam web. So now we go on to the bolts. We have bolts on beam, and we have bolts on the column. And we have to go through both now step by step. We don't want to have the shear plane passing through the thread. So I deselect this. Then I want to use the regular size of bolt holes. When you deactivate this, you could change this bolt hole diameter by yourself. But when you keep it in, it just adjusts to the bolt diameter here. So I keep it in. In our case, we don't have a horizontal symmetry. So I deactivate this and we keep in the vertical symmetry. I change to an M16 and I change this, the grades to 4.6. We come back to this later, just keep this in mind. So this is preset, the two rows and one column. So we are on the beam at the moment, so less here. One column, two rows. And I just adjust now the distance is slightly here. The E1 is 30 and the P1 and the E1, this is just adjusted automatically then. And I change this to 40 and oops, swaps the numbers around. So now we go ahead to the bolts and column. A similar thing now, I deactivate this. I keep the regular size. Uh, this time it's both horizontal and vertical symmetric and I change it to M16 and down to 4.6 and this time it's two rows and two columns. Just see the picture up here, the graphic, we are looking at the column. So I can also have this view, so two rows and two columns. Okay, again I adjust these distances. 30 and again this is done automatically and I adjust the E2 as well to 35. The P2 here is zero because just see up here the P2 we have only one column on each side so the P2 is obviously zero. So that's all for now hopefully that's what we think so we calculate and it always jumps into the design summary page and here's something red and it's obviously not okay and we have a look to the details. The joint ductility check is not okay. So as I said earlier, I want to go into detail here. So I go back to my presentation and I want to talk about the ductility. So the 
ductility of pin joints is checked automatically by the module if you select this checkbox and you, you, it is required that you have an adequate rotation capacity and also an adequate ductility. And this, to summarize this, you have to avoid brittle breakdowns. You have to ensure that the end plate deforms rather than a breakdown of your bolts and your welds. So what does it mean in practice? So you have, you have to change your design process, that you, you have to use stronger bolts. That is what it means at the end, so that it's less likely that the bolts are breaking and instead it's more likely that the plate deforms, as you see it here in the, in the bottom figure. Yeah, that it's not yet a fixed rule and the Eurocode 3 is still under discussion and that's why it can be still switched off in the module. So you can decide whether or not you want to consider this. So what does it mean in our example? I go back to the RFEM, I go back into my geometry and I choose a higher, stronger bolts. That's what it means. So I change my bolt strength straight to 10.9. It would be enough to do it on the, on the column, but just to avoid some confusion then later on in practice, you better choose, you better change them both. Otherwise, they might get mixed up and then, yep. So I change it to 10.9 and we try it again. And now the ductility check is okay. So what does it mean? The pin joins. This will be a, a change in this in the design process, so pin joints might rather be designed with stronger bolts than it was in the past. So okay, so this is this checkbox here. Include ductility checks in general results. You can still switch it off. Okay, so this is us done with this, and I want to go to the graphic. And as I promised, we want to print something in, into the report. I want to show you how to do this on this example. So I change into the view in X. No, hold on. I use, as, so yeah, the preset, the full values. You can watch the whole structure. You can also switch to the beam side. Or you can only see the connecting angles. And that's what I want to do now. I only want to see connecting angles and then I want to switch to the view in the plus x direction. So this way, so this looks pretty good already, but I would like to see the beam. So I switch it on, here you go. And now I have to switch on these dimensions, switch off the dimensions on beam because it's kind of doubled in here. So I switch it off, yes. And now this is a nice figure for the printout report. Here's the button to do this, print. And I want to use the printout report, printout report one. I want to use a height of 50% of the page. I don't want to rotate the image. And I want to use it as my screen view because I already adjusted my zoom now. Okay. Takes a while for the report to build up. So here you go, here's the figure. And I want to show you the selections I've made. I've kind of prepared this a wee bit. So you have always RFEM data, which you can switch on and off with all these load cases and combinations and so on. And you have the RF joints. So I've um, switched on the data of the module with both input and results. But I only display this case three, which we just designed. So I don't use the first two cases. And we have the input data where you can do some more detailed settings and we have the output data. So click OK, it builds up again. And oh, the, by default, you always get this view of connection. And in our case, this is a pretty useless figure. So you can just right click on it and remove it from the printout report this way and it disappears. And now instead, I would like to have this figure further up. So I just use drag and drop and move it up here. And here we go. Now we can see the RF joints description starts here with a figure. And then you get all the tables underneath. So I think that's a 
quite good. We save the report and then we just close it to come back to our RFEM. Okay, so that's how you print a graphic in the report. And still looking at node number seven. I, it's all calculated, so we have all these green ticks. We calculated three cases already. Now I close the module and I want to show you something pretty nice, which is just newly available from this customer version on. So it's just it's just out for a week now. So and you can when you go here in this list, you can change to the RF joints cases. You have to display the results. So now you see what happens already. So that's what I've what you've seen at the beginning of the presentation. And you can now switch on and off all the single joints designed. So I could switch off the 17. And that's what happens. And the nice thing now is we design two different connections on one node. So and we have to double check for any collision. So there might be some problems which you haven't noticed so far. So you can zoom in and that's indeed the case here because we have stiffeners in the column but this beam is just going through the stiffener so this wouldn't work. So we definitely need to notch this beam. So we have to go back into the module RF joints and make some more adjustments to our last node we've designed. So I go to the geometry and I apply a notch, which is up here. So notching of beam, up of flange. Yes, of course, the results need to be deleted. So and I also want to go into detail here. When I change to the minus y, to the minus y view, this one, it's, it's a bit hidden, but I think it's still the best view. You have to make sure that the notch is big enough. So, and we need a cleat length. Of, we need to reduce the cleat length a bit. It's 120 right now, but the stiffener is in the way, so we have to make it a bit smaller, so 110. And we have to adjust the sizes of the notch. So I increase this to 120, and I keep the 30, and this one is the radius, which is 10. So I calculate this, double check if still everything is okay, close the module, and then I have to display the results again and I try to get a, it's quite difficult to rotate it in but here you go the stiffener has his own space and now you have the notch here so this is now very well so this is a very nice and important feature that you can view all the joints you design together in one graphic okay So, okay, I go back to the module. I want to show you another design, another joint made with the RF joints steel pins. So we create again a new case. And now we want to do a pin plate connection. So I call it pinned so that I know which module is used and it's a pin plate. So, okay, we jump into the general page. We know this already now. This is a pin joint and it's beam to column, but this is now interesting as well. We indeed do a beam to beam connection and we will use um, V-Trick, which I want to show you now. So it's a fin plate connection, as I said, this, this one. And yeah, that's all. I don't want to include the ductility now because that's what we talk, we have explained this already and I don't want to repeat this. So we go on to the nodes and members and that's the node number 69 now. It's one in the upper floor. It's, can't find it straight away. Here we go, 69. Okay. And I zoom in a bit further. So, this is a beam, this is also a beam, it wouldn't really, we want to connect this beam to this beam, but the module can't really handle this by now. So what we can do is using a trick. So the M102 
is the beam we want to connect. So that's the beam. And we make the rest of it inactive. We just delete them. So that at, end, at the end, it looks like this. It's just a beam connected to nothing, basically. And we will use an anchor plate instead of the beam web. So we, we kind of simulate our beam web. And this is the trick I want to show you how you can still design beam-to-beam -beam connections, although it's not really ready to be used yet. So we go to the loads, we load in the result combination one, and then we go ahead to the geometry. And as I said, we define an anchor plate now. It's up here, and we have to simulate the beam web. So I adjust the, the thickness of the anchor plate so that it matches the thickness of our beam web. It's 7.5. I also adjust the size of the anchor plate. And I adjust the fin plate dimensions down to 100, 70, and a thickness of 8. So see what we've got. Just a wee tiny anchor plate which simulates our beam wrap. And I want to use M12. Yes, that's correct. And I want to use a 5.6 strength. I adjust the dimensions here slightly, the distances. The E1 is 25. And the welds, I have to increase the size of the welds. It's 4 millimeter. So what we still have to do, remember, this is a beam-to-beam -beam connection in reality. And the beam has a flange going along here. So we have to define a notch. So I apply a notch for the upper flange again. And it has to be, ah, what I want to show you here, watch the graphic carefully. So I switch it off again. The fin plate is moving. That's because we have centered on. We have said it's centered on beam, and when I apply a upper flange, the beam is getting a bit smaller, so it's moving down. So I don't want to have it move it down. So I adjust this to the highest position possible. So it's moving up now again. So and the flange itself, it's okay as it is. So I click OK, and the design checks are all fine. Okay. So this is us done with the module out of joints steel pint. So that's what you can do with this module. And as I explained earlier, there are some more types available and you can test them yourself. So the last two types of connections are column bases. So I create a new case and say, give it a name. It's a column base. And we start with a moment resistant one. OK. So I change to column base. And we have the hinged column footings and the restrained column footings. And we start with a restrained one, as I said. And you can always use drop-down or figures. I think I said this already, but this is a bit confusing at the beginning. And here now, I want to I wanna go through the types we have, because that's what I have not done so far in the presentation. So we have a base plate without stiffening. That's the one we want to look at today. It looks like this. Then we have a base plate with stiffeners, so the V stiffeners here on the sides. Then we have a base plate with stiffeners, but it, this time you have it on both sides of the column. Uh, and we have uh, the base plate with channel sections available, and we have the bucket footings available. So quite a lot. And we want to have a look to the base plate without stiffening today. 
Okay, so on we go to the to the next type, to the next page, nodes and members, and we choose a node, that's node number four. So we obviously we have to choose a column which has a moment resistant support. So we choose the node number four. Okay. And it's it's loaded the members in already and we have to adjust this slightly. So this is one of the tension members in here. We don't want to consider this now for the connection itself. So I make this inactive. But please note that the loads obviously are still taken into account. The, all the force is coming from this tension member. Okay, now we go through here. We have the loads. This is quickly done, result combination one. And then we go ahead with the footing. So I want to use a conc um, a higher and stronger concrete, so I go into the library and choose this um, concrete 2530, this one here. Then I want to increase the foundation to 800. I want to also increase the grout thickness to 30. I keep the friction and I come back to the friction coefficient later. We don't really use it right now here in this in this connection type. We will use it for the next one, but I in general we recommend to keep it quite low just to be on the safe side because you can never be really sure about friction. We want to consider cracks in the concrete. So well, this is the checkbox down here. Okay, so that's all about the footing we have to define. And now we go on to the base plate and the welds here. So it's that steel, that's okay. We want to adjust the dimensions of the plate slightly, so 480 times 300 times 20. And I also want to adjust the weld thicknesses. So the weld on flange is 6 millimeter and the welds on the web are 4 millimeter. That's enough. And I don't want to allow transfer of compression by contact. This is, again, on the safe side, we want to fully valve the whole thing and we don't want to trust any com contact. So we weld it completely. Okay, so we go ahead to the next page. This is about anchors. So the anchors down here. We choose an M20. And I increase the length to 400. I adjust the spacings so that they are coming a bit closer to the center, to 50 and 50. And we have to define the washers down here. Oh, yeah, I apply the reduction, the reduction factor. This is very important for tension. So it's recommended to keep this in. And yeah, the washers, they are square and they have dimensions of 80 by 10. Okay. Okay. Last page, shear transfer. We do not want to take the friction into account. That's what I said earlier. So that was the, the friction coefficient here, the point 0.2. We don't use it anyway. We switch it off here just to be on the safe side and instead of considering friction we want to use a shear key. So I want to choose an other, a different profile, the AGA 140, this one here. It's steel, that's correct. So that's all fine. So this is the shear key down here. Okay, that's us done. With this, this is done with this one. So I calculate. And this is all more than okay. So it's not even close to one. So this is fine as it is. 
So, and the last connection we do for today is a hinged column footing. So, I, last time we create a new case and I call it column base hinged and we are in the column base module already. We change to hinged column footing and we want to create a simple column base today. I go through the types because that's what I haven't done so far. So we have the tapered column bases that look like this and we have also the column base for rectangular hollow sections and the same for circular sections. We used the first one, the simple column bases. The node I want to choose is the node number 7. So that's the one here, pinned. Yes, it loads it in and that's pretty easy. So there is only one column available, so we don't have to do anything here. We go ahead to loads. This is again the result combination 1. And then we do the same settings for the footing as we did for the first one. So it's just a repeating of things now. The 2530, the foundation is 800, the depth is 800, the crowd thickness is 30, and the friction coefficient, this is getting more important now. As you will see later, it's 0.2, and we again want to consider the cracks. So the base plates and welds. We want to have a base plate 300 times 300. And I want to adjust the weld thicknesses both to 4 millimeter. That's enough here. So go ahead to the anchors. We want to use the M16 with a strength grade of 4.6. And this time we want to use the straight ripped rod anchors. So watch the graphic when I change this. So the anchors are changing in the graphic. It always takes a wee while. And this is all okay. We want to use the reduction factor again. And we have to define the anchors and the washers. The anchors, uh, we did this up here, but the length of the, we keep this. We keep going with the 250. And we just uh, adjust the distances from the edges. We increase this. So they are coming closer to the center. And the washers, we just change this to 60. So a bit larger as well. So the shear transfer, the last page we look at today, this time we want to consider friction only. This is for the shear transfer. So the anchors are still obviously used for tension, compression and so on, but for the shear transfer we want to use friction only. And remember we set this the friction coefficient to 0.2 and now we can calculate this. And so using the friction we get an utilization, a design ratio of 6, 67%, which is pretty good, as we also have chosen a, a friction coefficient, which is on the safe side. So you see now we have designed six different connections today. I think it was a pretty good overview about what the RF joints module can do. And I want to just show you the last one we designed. We displayed the results. So these are the footings we just designed. You can also see them in the main graphic. And, and the other connections. And as I said already, you can switch them on and off all and watch them all together. So I hope this webinar was helpful to you. I hope you have learned a lot. And I just go back to my slides to finish up the webinar. And kind of show you those who visiting not the first webinar know what's now coming. So I just want to emphasize that we have a website. Obviously, you can always um, visit our website. You can follow us online with all these social media things. You can always write us an email if you have any questions. You can give us a call in case you have a service contract. And I want to show you the upcoming webinars. So we have many interesting things coming up. The next webinar is about about form finding of membrane and cable constructions by using RFEM. This is a new add-on module we have. So this is only av available for RFEM and not for Airstab, obviously. 
but this will be quite interesting. It's just now in September. So, And the other one afterwards is about time history analysis by using RFDyne and Pro. The, the part forced vibrations. So here, sorry, here we will simulate walking and running across a footbridge. So it's not only an excitation changing over time, it's also changing its position. So this might be quite interesting for you as well. So I thank you very much for your attention and I hope to hear you soon the next time and I hope it was useful. Many thanks. Bye-bye.